everyone, I'm Ian, and today I'm gonna to take you on a quick walkthrough and just show you some basic operation of the Coleman 202RD. Starting off right up front on the power tongue jack, you'll see the switch right over here is for your light, simply on and off. The rocker switch next to that will operate the jack itself. This one's nice and easy. Push and hold the rocker switch up to bring the tongue up, and then do the same, or the opposite rather, to bring the tongue down. Right behind that are your two 20 pound propane tanks. Your switch over will be right here in the center. You'll see where it says supply and points to the tank that it is currently using. Uh, so for example, we're gonna use this tank. The supply is pointing there. Simply open the tank up and that will feed propane into the RV, uh, which will help us run things like our furnace, sometimes a refrigerator, depending on what the RV is equipped with, which this one has a 12 volt, you don't have to worry about it, uh, but it will help us uh, run things like our water heater as well. This will be your pass through storage. You'll see it has a magnetic catch, so nice and simple easy to use there. And behind that is our stabilizer jacks. The control for it will be located right here. And again, just push it down to drop those stabilizer jacks down. Now you will notice this one right here is gonna drop down before the other one uh, for the most part. Well, these ones are dropping down pretty even, but if one does drop down before the other, don't worry. As soon as one of them touches down, the other one will start to drop. That is how it is programmed. Uh, now bear in mind, folks, these are stabilizer jacks, not leveling jacks. You wanna use blocks underneath your tires to level it out. If you try to use these to level out your camper, chances are you are going to break them. You will bend them and they will no longer function. The purpose of these stabilizer jacks is to make sure, or rather not make sure, but help uh, prevent a lot of rocking in the camper as you're moving around inside. There'll still be some, but that will definitely mitigate a lot of it. Um, to get into the camper, you have these solid steps right here by Lippert. Now the way these ones function, let me open this door up, you have adjustable feet right down here. You have some pins, simply push those pins out just like so, right? Pull it out and that will let me, allow me to adjust the foot wherever I wish. Once you have the adjustments you want, <laughs> push it right through just like so, drop it down and you will take a look at this, um, I don't know what you wanna call this, this plate, right? You wanna make sure there's not a huge gap. If it's up like this, what's gonna happen is you're gonna to go to shut the door and you'll hit this plate right here. So you wanna make sure that's fairly level and then you will adjust your feet down from there. Uh, to put these steps away as well as to uh, deploy them, you'll see it just clips right up there, just like that. Put this over, Oop, there we go, like so, nice and easy. So you'll see that is locked into place. To deploy them, you simply hit that lever, drop them down, adjust your feet, and you're good to go. Uh, making my back a little bit further, right here is your suburban furnace. Um, that will, of course, supply heat to the RV. And right up top, take a look, you'll see your power awning. This one currently does have the LED light strip on. I'll show you where that control is when we go inside. You also notice a couple outside speakers. Those are actually controlled by your multimedia center inside. And right here is the rear switch for your rear two stabilizer jacks. Coming around to the other side. A couple of quick things I wanna hit on over here. One is the water heater. This is a suburban six gallon water heater. Next to that is your fresh tank fill. In the event that you do not have city water and you obviously will want water, you're either gonna wanna fill that up before you leave or if there is water at the campsite, you can fill it up there too. And then a 30 amp power cord will be located right here. You're just going to pull this out. And once uh, you get that out far, far enough, you'll want to plug this into the post. You just drop this down, then the cord will hang out just like that and you will be good to go. Last thing I wanna to touch on before we head inside, folks, is the termination. This is where all of your uh, sewer water as well as your gray water will dump out. So you will notice the handles are aptly colored. So gray for gray tank, black for black tank. I do recommend that you keep your valves closed like they are right now while you're camping. Otherwise, if you flush the toilet, all of the water will drain out, but a lot of times the solids will stay in the tank and we don't want that. So uh, you'll have it just like this. You'll pull the black valve first, then pull the gray valve, just helping to wash everything out. As soon as we come inside, you will see the control panel mounted right here in the cabinets. Now, a couple things here. One, your tank monitoring panel will be located there. So, you know, just simply touch the button just like so. You'll see this one actually has some water in the fresh tank, but our black and grays are empty as they should be. We can also click there to see the health or level rather of our battery. Right over next to that is the awning. Uh, you will see it has retract and extend to 
we retract and extend the awning. Um, underneath are your lights. So you have a switch right here for your interior lights. That will be all of your main ceiling lights. Any of them that are underneath the cabinets are operated independently. Next to that are the exterior lights. You'll flip that on for the uh, light in the awning that we saw when we were out there, that LED strip. And then water pump. I'm actually going to shut that off for the time being here, but that uh, will pull water out of your freshwater tank. So if you don't have city water, you'll want to flip that on, and then that will take the water that is in your tank. You will hear the system pressurize, and then it will basically stop. The pump will kick off until you turn water on, and then it will start. It'll need to repressurize the system so you hear that pump kick back on. Last thing, right next to that is your water heater. You will see the switch right there. This one it does run off propane only. So you want to make sure you flip that on uh, to make sure you get hot water. Make it a little bit further here. So uh, lights do, as I mentioned, do operate independently right underneath the cabinets. Super simple and easy. Uh, and over across the other side is the thermostat. Now, folks, this is only for the furnace. Uh, the, the AC is operated a little bit differently, uh, but you have you know, your switch right over top here, which will turn it on and off. And then underneath is that uh, basically the, the thermostat, if you will, for the furnace itself. Coming in a little bit further, you have the cooktop. This one is a Furion 3 burner cooktop. It is recessed, which is great uh, to, to uh, access those burners. Just flip that glass cover up just like so. You will see the knobs do light up if you want it on, but this same switch right here also controls the light in the oven, if you're wondering about that. To turn any of the burners on, you will simply flip the switch till you see the little flame right here. You will click that over, and as you can see, now we have flame. You actually can do the same thing for the oven. This one does have a, uh, a spark ignition in the oven, so you'll turn the oven to the flame setting, spark it, and the oven will turn on. Uh, underneath that is the furnace itself. It is a direct vent furnace. We saw where the thermostat is to control that. Uh, on the flip side, if it's a little bit warmer out like it is today, uh, you can turn on the AC. Now, in order to run this, folks, you will have to have 120 volt or shore power or generator uh, giving you that AC to be able to operate this one. But the controls for it are right here, as well as uh, you can turn these off if you want to adjust the uh, dumps right there, open these up to have it kind of shoot out elsewhere. Otherwise, open this up to have it really cool down this back area here. If you want to listen to some music, you will see that is where your radio is located. That is Bluetooth capable. If you want a TV, that is where it will mount. Uh, your antenna booster will be right up on the ceiling there. Last couple things I want to hit on are right over on the other side. One of them is the refrigerator. This is a 12 volt refrigerator, so it'll run off your batteries. This is a travel lock. You'll want to make sure that you lock that when you're traveling so things don't fall out. Open it up just like so. And you can see right in here is the control for it. So you can simply tap this set button to go through all your different temperature settings, or you'll see right there, it says you can hold that for 10 seconds and that will shut it, uh, shut it off or turn it back on. So if you're storing it, something like that, you want lights, but not the refrigerator, you can just push and hold it. Underneath that is your uh, control or your, your fuse panel here. So you will see your breakers right over on the side. This will be for your 120 for anything 12 volt driven. That'll be on this side. You can see all of your fuses there as well. So if you're having any kind of electrical problems, that's generally a good place uh, to start your troubleshooting process. Right in here, of course, is the bathroom. For the toilets, it is a foot flush lever. If you just push that down a little bit, it will fill the bowl with water. You push it down all the way, and that will, of course, flush the toilet. Uh, opens up the little ball there so everything can drop down in. All right, folks, a little bit earlier, I was talking about troubleshooting the electrical system in your RV. If you're looking how, uh, how, how to troubleshoot anything in the RV, or you just want more in-depth information on how something may work, like maybe your tanks or your oven, we have a huge video library available to you, brought to you by Camping World and Good Sam because we're just trying to make RVing fun and easy for you. Speaking of fun, stop watching this video, get out there and have a good time.